Hi there and welcome to the 2.1.1 patch. It's now live and we're going to go through all the patch notes today. So if you want this as a podcast, here you go. <laughs> so there's some free features added. Hyperlane density can now be changed to full, which guarantees every possible hyperlane will exist. I like that they're making this clear and not bringing in some kind of number value, which only the deeply informed know is full, but everyone else speculates, can I up this further? Now, you can choose to start in a trinary or binary star system when creating your empire. That's pretty cool for role-playing reasons and it might, it might give some positive because in my experience, suns tend to give you more energy. So if you want to go energy heavy, maybe something like a research empire or machines, then that might be for you. Experimental uh, estimated time of arrival feature put in for starship movement orders, telling you the approximate date of arrival. Pretty good. Mm. It, <laughs> we're waiting to see if it's correct or not. I, I think they would want feedback for that because I, I don't think it works perfectly right now, what I've heard, but other than that, it's, it's a start. It's really cool. Now possible to achieve partial victory in subjugation and liberation wars with occupied systems splitting off as a new subject or ally in the event of a status quo peace. That's also good. Like, so you don't have to get to the 100% stuff and still can get something. That's really cool. That's a big improvement because there's only half winning. And there's also half winning instead of just you get nothing but you were nearly overwhelming. Put in grayscale versions of strategic resources icons to indicate that you currently lack the technology to collect them. That is very helpful. At least, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's now a plethora of strategic resources and if the game keeps you informed in such an elegant way, that is really cool, I think. So, let's continue to balance. So, balance. There's increased power usage of torpedoes. Supposedly, they were, they were too good, right? Reduced frequency of gaining Elgate insights from unrelated anomalies by 70%. Okay, so that's getting nerfed, but I think there's more about the Elgates coming. The technology must now be researched after gathering all Elgate insights before you can start the project to open the gates. Okay, so they are further formalizing the or streamlining the process or making it clear what you have to do. I don't know. We'll see how that plays out. Reduced hit points of missiles across the board, making point defense more potent. That was also in the beta patch, so it must have worked out well. The prosperity faction will now be happier if you have war policy set to defensive wars only which makes sense, in my opinion. The imperialist fiction is now also okay with ideological wars and will only be angry if policy is set to defensive wars only. Okay, easier to please then. Reduce the chance of a marauder Great Khan dying from non-combat causes, as it should be. <laughs> that's just so... Um, yeah, that's, that's like... I mean, that would be like you come in... D&D, &D, your final boss, and you come there and there. he died of old age because you guys were too slow in solving all the quests. Oh, okay. Well then. <laughs> Where's he now? Well, that's his ashes. Okay. I guess we've won. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. Rogue servitors can now allow organics to colonize planets. That's cool. That's cool. I mean... So you can have full organics planets. And that absolutely makes makes sense too for at least for the start of the rogue servitors. I mean later on you might go for a build where you send the organics to orbitals and the rogue servitors um, kind of stay the the robots stay on the planets and transform everything to um, machine worlds, but at the start, this absolutely makes sense. Increased AI weight for naval cap and command limit techs. 
also makes sense. So the AI has better fleets, increased base weight of terraforming techs. Um, so the AI also starts terraforming? That will be interesting. Reduced materials opinion boost towards machine empires. Was that too strong? I'm not sure about this, but um, I mean, it's okay. If you play on highest difficulty, no one likes you anyways. UI. New icon for the L cluster. Okay, good, good, good. AI, AI improvements. AI will now wait some time before changing AI priority if it recently changed priority. So, um, that AI with the attention disorder, <laughs> it's fixed now. It got its Ritalin. Then performance, performance. A lot of people have been waiting for performance and supposedly there have been good performance increases. Cached tile resource production for faster performance, more border calculations, optimization. Borders are now only updated if they need to be, reducing unnecessary operation. This is something really good. Remove useless recalculation of borders when planet when planets change owners. Okay, that makes sense because yeah, it, it is now yeah, bound to each other, right? The borders are a result of having the planet and not the other way, other way around, like it was. Bypass distance, cache improvements. Okay. <laughs> In short, Starbase's owner modifiers are calculated only once and parallelized that bit. Ah, that's good. That's good. Now, seeing that almost every processor today has at least two threads, right? Parallelizing AI strategy monthly recalc and reducing the number of systems evaluated okay so it's more like um there was there was a school in in uh, chess programming for chess programs where you would go for brute force or you would go for like strategic depth and the strategic depth has totally died out now because of the of the increasing power of um, the CPUs but it was very effective at the start to have them have like some positional feeling and probably something like that is implemented here in the in the AI strategy monthly recalc. More caching of tile related data performance fixes a performance back with previous caching of tile related data. Sounds good. Then modding. Moved scripted variables for buildings into the scripted variables file. Makes sense. Saved event targets should now always persist through special projects. Okay, um, I'm, I don't know much about modding, so I'm not going to commentate much. Added is event design setting for event ship designs that should be blocked by fleet manager. Improved performance of global saved event targets. You can now define in a section template whether it's components, turrets or something should be drawn graphically or not. Effects that take name such as create ship or set name can now extract a name from scope. For example set name is root will take the name from the root object even if it's a different type of object such as naming a ship after a leader and that i think it's cool and i understand that too it's very cool for role play now we come to the meat of the of the patch that is bug fixes and i always love bug fixes i keep repeating this because i think bug fixes are um yeah the the gems of the company the the gems that you don't recognize as gems the the raw diamonds i don't know i don't know i i mean it makes the game just better to fix bugs so it's a safe way to improve a game fix the bug where guaranteed nearby colonizable worlds sometimes did not appear i had that it was really terrible um you would just have nothing near you <laughs> or only something like tomb worlds and uh worlds from a totally other empire and and stuff like that fixed pop modifier out of sync in multiplayer yeah, the out of sync errors in multiplayer that's always something you like to eliminate fixed several other out of sync causes with convoluted causes fixed several crashes with similarly arcane origin stories yeah the arcane origin stories of bugs that's a story of itself at a distance stars ownership icon for multiplayer setup good uh, fixed and 
out of sync related to ship armor stats. Fix missing ambient sounds for certain star classes. That's odd, right? Fix, fixed missing brain slug traits for scientists and admirals. I'm not sure about this. Fixed getting brain slugs and other non-robotic traits for event spawned robotic leaders. Fix the asteroid collision anomaly, avoiding the wrong deposit type. Fixed and hope achievement for opening the Elgate cluster not being awarded. <laughs> yeah, that's that's important for the achievement hunters. Fixed missing text description for the Elgate inside technology. F missing word added in face disruptor tech description. Fixed other typos rendering the game literally unplayable. Oh, I like that. Yeah, literally literally unplayable. Okay. Fix some. Horizon signal related building tool tips. Uh, that's that was on the list. Like, wow, you had some time for that. That's really good. Improved janky Tianke death animations, giving rise to a desire for a new 1930s dance craze. Fixed cases where you would sometimes not identify Leviathans after meeting them. This could also fix curators not having anything to say about them. Fix the Great Tempest event, having two choices with identical outcomes because it was painfully close to much of real life. <laughs> yeah, whatever you do, that happens. Start Consciousness can no longer pick Liberation Wars policy as it did nothing for them anyway. Face Shifting Planet now has edge case handling if a nation completes the project before researching the anomaly. Pretty cool. I mean, that's... yeah. These timeline things need to be optional like that because yeah that's that's always something like that's like in an rpg hey you've killed that guy already so you can't do the quest anymore because the boss is dead already what <laughs> pacification of space amoebas or crystals now turns them neutral instead of friendly because come on guy you don't know me like that yeah Fixed fanatic purifier devouring swarm and determined exterminator empire suddenly becoming socially presentable when talking to the curators about Elgates. <laughs> what? <laughs> Fixed instances where empires created after initial Elgate activation would be unable to use the Elgates. <laughs> wow, that's good. Fix a text overflow issue in the anomaly tracker. That yeah, that that's spoiling the the atmosphere so good it's fixed. Fixed bunker bot anomaly not generating an L gate inside. Fixed the crash when the gateway type doesn't exist. Affected certain mods. Fixed an out of sync due to er experimental subscript based navigation. Added missing modifier string for all language. Gis. Marauder neighbor events can no longer trigger for empires that have no communications with them. As it did for me repeatedly and I was like looking for the neighbor we had there that was dangerous but no one was there. Probably calculate cached values when ships are created, meaning fleet power is now dip displayed correctly. Fix the bug where freshly created ships would not benefit immediately from bonus hull point effects. Good, good. As addressed a couple of edge cases that might cause improper strategic resource tech weights. Okay. Um, yeah. If you fix the AI behaving strange, that is always good. Added go to buttons to a couple of anomalies. Cool. Fix the, fix the cause of ship stats out of sync. Some code was executed in unsafe order somehow when recalculating for hot join. Aha. Scriptable localization error logging fix. That's probably, that sounds so arcane, but it's probably very important. Asteroids can now glow. That's even more important. Fixed L gates that were opened in 2.1.0 being unusable in 2.1.1. Okay. Good, good. Minor localization polish and fixes to events. Fixed broken repair costs for ruined buildings. Good. Fixed the Great Khan being stuck bombarding the planets of Satrapies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fixed issue with ancient manufactory that could leave the system star without a resource deposit. All right. Hit display of weapons when inspecting space creatures to prevent amoebas with freaking lasers attached to their heads. <laughs> what? <laughs> Added missing check to prevent sea of consciousness tech gain exploit. Fix the bug where it was impossible to land troops on planets captured by Titanic life. <laughs> oh come on. Fixed ruin gateways blocking construction of mega structures. Very good. Fixed construction time being calculated incorrectly for defensive platforms. 
Yeah, not and not that anyone looked. Oh, maybe some some players optimized it like that. I mean, there may be some players, but in case you want to optimize that, it's very important. Machine intelligences will no longer look down upon synthetic empires for being artificial beings. So, yeah, that makes sense. Fixed ludic ludicrously bo broken costs for star-based defense platform upgrades. Added missing selection sound effects for ice asteroids and brown dwarves. Yeah, you want that. You want that. It should fix Grey Goo and Marauder fleets, sometimes just idling, instead of attacking nearby targets. World Shaper Ascension perk is no longer available to machine empires. Oh, come on. <laughs> I, I think I used that, but that was in 1.9. Fixed hyperlane detection range wrongly showing up in every ship-related pop-up known to sentient life. Autonomous ship intellect is no longer marked as a dangerous tech. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Plant obolescence can no longer fire for non-materialist empires. Is good. Fixed crash to desktop on loading save game from in-game. I had that. That was really pesky. Fixed asteroid collision anomaly avoiding the wrong deposit type. <coughs> and that was it. Thank you for listening. Now, um, what will be next time? Now, the next plan is to launch a 2.1.2 optional beta branch next week, containing more fixes and improvements. And I'll... In the end screen, I'll recommend my... Uh, my go-to tutorial video, if you don't know how to activate the beta. Well, you probably know, but just in case, or if you have a completely innocent friend in these in these uh, matters, show him the video, and I guarantee he'll he'll be able to do it. He'll be able to opt into the beta for your multiplayer game, if you like. <coughs> so, the key thing for us, that is a good sentence for me, that's the key sentence for me, is, is to get the really badly needed lag fixes in the hands of... Uh, of the whole player base now that they have been confirmed. Thanks again for all your help making sure the release version was sound. So that's pretty cool. That the bug fixes are a priority at the moment is something I love. So um, that said, thank you for watching and happy gaming to you. We'll see each other next week, probably with another Stellaris Dev Diary or more bug fixes in 2.1.2. So. We'll find out about that. Have a great time until then, and happy gaming. This is Immanuel Khan, signing out.